Welcome to our walkthrough of a sales cycle with Spire Systems business management software. This video continues a series on the setup of enterprise resource planning for a fictional company called Cold North Canola Oil, which produces virgin canola oil and canola meal out of canola seed sourced from northern Saskatchewan, Canada. Now that our inventory is set up and ready for use, we can complete a full sales and purchasing product cycle. Um, we'll start here, already logged into our North Cold North Canola Oil Company and our Spire desktop application. So our scenario here right now, so we don't have any inventory on hand. Um, and so either we are just starting out for the first time or uh, we sold all of our inventory and need to restock. Uh, so we're going to start with a sales scenario. So we'll start out with a customer contacting us to buy some canola oil. Um, so possibly something along the lines of an email from a client asking for 20 cases of 500 milliliter bottles of canola oil with a purchase order number. So we'll start out in our sales module. Our sales guy receives that email, opens it up, and opens up his Spire, logs in, and starts a new sales order. <clears throat> when the sales order comes up, uh, particularly if it's a newer client maybe, you would send them a quote before a sales order. Uh, when we browse to our customer here, I can click on the magnifying glass and uh, double click on the client, or alternatively, I could partially type it and it will auto complete and let me select from a drop down. Uh, enter our PO number, and then we can do ship via. Salesperson is default for this customer uh, to Shane Zaba, who works at Cold North. Okay, and so we're going to fill out their order for. 20 boxes and then we are going to uh, send them a quote and so there's a couple different things we can do here I can uh, take a preview of this first so this is a default template for a uh, quote report uh, this can be modified by us to show your logo or, or to be in color or anything to have any information you want on it as well as the uh, custom fields so I could uh, typically you would export this to PDF and then email it as an attachment. Uh, Spire allows us to email directly out of the software which saves a couple of steps and makes things quicker. So instead from this menu I can email the quote directly and I can pick from the contacts for that customer and so I can say okay well the, the guy who's buying this also happens to be Shane and so we're going to send to him uh, the quote because he requested it. I'm also going to BCC blind carbon copy, uh, send a, a copy to myself that he can't see, just to let me know that uh, it did actually go out. And then I also have some templates made. So in here I've got a quote with terms. Um, and I can insert fields here. So it can, you can see here it says insert bill to name. And so automatically it's going to give me, change that into the client. Uh, so I could change that maybe to the contact name let's see what that looks like yeah that's better so we'll do that instead and then uh, that way it makes it very quick right when it pops up you can easily send lots of emails quickly if you need to um, okay so we are going to uh, send this uh, right from Spire and you can see here there's a box for use company email setup so that would be if we had a general email configuration for everybody to use, but in this case, I've configured it per user, which you can do, and so it's nice, gives you uh, per user respond to addresses. So we'll send that. So it pops up and says all emails were sent successfully, and I can expand it and see a, a preview of it. Okay. So we send that quote to, uh, to our customer, and they reply with something like, um, you know, that looks good. Please invoice and ship. So, okay, so we're ready to order that. <clears throat> so we come in and we change this to an open sales order. And right away you can see we're going to a back order quantity because we don't have any stock. Uh, so at that point, I'm going to want to uh, requisition out of that. I shouldn't have closed it. So even from this menu while it's open, I can say, okay, I'm out, I need more, and I can click requisition if I have permission to and it will pop up with a requisition list. Now maybe um, this user as a salesperson doesn't have the ability to process 
uh, requisitions. In this case, I do because this user has full permissions to everything. But that is something you could restrict to, to a production manager if you wanted to. Uh, so we'll process that out of here. Before we do, you'll notice that there's uh, a target type and a vendor no, an order no. So let's change that and process it. Yeah, and so that production uh, will show up in the production order list now. So this will stay as a sales order, which we can close and that'll just sit in our sales order module. And then when I come down to production, we can see that we've got our production order. Um, and when we open that up, it will reference our sales order or our original quote number uh, with the customer PO, which is great. So you can see in here, everything is red except for canola meal, because that's a negative. Uh, so we don't have any of the stuff to make what we need here. So again, we're going to requisition out of this module. And then here we get a list of everything we need to finish that order. Um, we're going to take out unchecked canola meal because that's something that we make as we go, not something we order. But everything else we do need. Uh, so we're going to process that into purchase orders. So you can see we've got a bunch of different items here. Um, and so normally we would be worried when we, when we process this that we'd get a bunch of different purchase orders and then have to manually combine them. Spire does a great job of doing that for us. So now that I've hit process on that, we can go to our purchases and we see uh, it created two purchase orders for us. One for our canola seed supplier, so that's got the seed order in it. And then our uh, bottling supplies, it created and combined all of those onto one purchase order, which is great. Okay, so we'll do our canola seed first. So we can see here we've got an order quantity of 460 kilograms. Uh, but we had, when we set up that code, put in a minimum, a minimum order quantity of 34,000. So we can order less, but that's there to show us that we should be ordering the minimum quantity. And maybe we can only, maybe they'll reject it if we don't. Uh, so we'll change that to our minimum order, and then we will issue it. Okay, so this brings up our purchase order that's been issued. So we'll give, we'll take a look at that first. So we can see, um, pretty straightforward as far as a purchase order goes, something to send to your vendor to get them to deliver your product. Uh, and again, it can be customized with your logo and whatever color graphics you want on there. Uh, when we come back into this, instead of uh, printing this, normally what we'd want to do is email that to our supplier. And so I can send that directly to my vendor. Um, Maybe it's canolaseed1.com. And again, sending a co copy of that to myself as well as having a, a purchase order template there, which I don't have set up already. Um, new purchase order for North Cold North Canola. Canola, please find our purchase order attached. Okay, and again, we're going to use the, uh, the user's email. So we would hit send on that. It would go out to them and send us a copy of it. Now, uh, I may also want to send a copy of that to my shipping and receiving. Alternatively, I can come in here and do a communication and say, uh, incoming purchase order, canola seed. I might have that as a type purchasing. I can assign that to one of the uh, shipping and receiving uh, guys in the back and that will pop up on their screen when they log in saying, hey, you've got an incoming purchase order coming in um, that would match up with the email that they received by default when, that, when that's, in, when that's uh, issued. Okay, so we issued our canola oil. We're going iss to issue our uh, bottling supplies. So we come in here and we click on issue. Oh, before I do that though again, We've got minimum order quantity, which is more than we're or when than we need, uh, but because we've got those minimums, we'll change those. All right, and again, uh, the purchase order comes up, and so again, I can email email that directly out to my shipping receiving contact and to my um, vendor if I want. 
Okay, so those have been issued. So now um, it's, it's a couple of days later, uh, maybe a week later, and our, our stuff has arrived in uh, shipping and receiving. So at this point, our shipping and receiving guy is going to come in and receive these, or alternatively notify, notify whoever would do that. Uh, so we come in and we receive all. Now we have a receive quantity here, showing our cost, which we can add freight to if we need to. And then we're going to click receive. Yes, we would like to create an invoice against that. And then we have an opportunity to adjust the invoice if we need to, if our vendors inform us it's actually a different amount. Uh, and add in a vendor invoice number. And due dates, invoice date. And then you can see when that pops up, because of our settings on our, uh, where we added our different inventory accounts, this is adding to inventory seed, which is good. Um, we don't need to create payables in there. Perfect, against our accounts payable. And then we'll close that. And then we get the opportunity to post some, um, or to print some reports on that. So we have a receipts order fulfillment report, which shows us which uh, production orders or sales orders in this case are waiting for what we just received and then we have a inventory adjustment report if we want to keep track of uh, the ledger and the, and the value of that that receipt that receipt for me okay so we're gonna receive our other one here so we're gonna receive all of them we could receive them line by line uh, at separate times if we needed to Okay, and so we're going to receive that. Yes, we'll create an invoice. Again, I want to see the accounts it's posting to, so I'll turn off automatic posting. Enter in another invoice number. And again, you can see it's splitting it up in between our bottling and oil inventory, uh, which is great. That's what we want. All right. And again, we get our reports that we can uh, print or email if we want. Okay, so now our uh, raw materials are in stock, so we can see our production order is all green and ready to be produced. And so we can come in here and build our production order. Let's put our receive quantity, assemble quantity, and let's build that guy. And then we have a report that we can email or print off on that. Probably um, whoever's finishing, actually finishing the production process would be ideal to come in and then email this to the sales guy just to let them know that that production cycle is run uh, or to a production manager possibly. You can see reference in here is the purchase order and the sales order number uh, which helps to keep track of all that. And we can see that's posted in our production history. Uh, so we'll come back to our sales order. And you can see right away when I come in, inventory is available to commit on this order. Ship available, which is great. So it lets you know when you come in that this one's uh, got stock now. So we'll ship available. Now we're shipping all 20. Um, so everything else looks good. We can invoice that. And then I, I get a uh, invoice and a shipping label. So we'll take a look at those. There's our invoice and our shipping label. Didn't print on that. Uh, but then you would have a shipping label you could send with uh, the shipment out to the, the end user for reconciliation. And then in our accounts payable window, we've got our two bills auto generated from that waiting to be paid. And that completes a full uh, sales cycle for uh, Cold North Canola Oil. Uh, thank you very much for watching.